No matter who they are, every NFL player has some sort of expectations heading into the season. First round picks have the highest expectations and are expected to be franchise cornerstones. While it is nice for teams to get late round gems or even undrafted free agents that eventually become starters, they ultimately are not expected to be key contributors or starters in the way that first round picks are. In today's video, we're going to be discussing the expectations of picks 11 through 20 from the first round of the 2020 NFL Draft. This is a continuation from the last video I did in which we discussed the expectations for picks 1 through 10. But before we get started, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel as all support is very much appreciated. Now let's begin. We're going in a reverse order just like we did for picks 1 through 10, so we're starting off with the 20th pick, which was Caleb on Chason. Chason was a good pass rushing prospect, and what a great landing spot for him to go to in Jacksonville. He will play opposite Josh Allen, who in his rookie season recorded 10.5 sacks, 23 quarterback hits, and forced 2 fumbles. Chason, on the other hand, in his final year at LSU, tallied 6.5 sacks and 13.5 tackles for a loss. He also accumulated a National Championship ring. He will be in a good situation right away as teams will be focusing on Allen more so than Caleb on as he, Josh Allen, proved he could get after the quarterback and consistently at that in 2019. The Jags are starting to build up a good defense again with their two first round picks, the other being corner CJ Henderson, and Chase on in his rookie season has a chance to put up good numbers. He will more than likely be in a lot of one on one pass rushing situations, and because of that, I don't doubt 8 to 10 sacks right away for him. Next we go to Las Vegas, where the Raiders selected corner Damon Arnett with the 19th pick. To be completely honest, I didn't like this pick at all, especially with corners Jeff Gladney, Jalen Johnson, and Trayvon Diggs still on the board. However, the selection was made, and Arnett will be thrown into the fire right away, as six times in a season he will play against players like Tyreek Hill, Keenan Allen, Mike Williams, Cortland Sutton, Jerry Judy, and KJ Hamler. I think for Arnett's sake, the Raiders' sake, and the Raiders' fans' sake, we will find out fairly quickly how good he is and if he can live up to the 19th overall selection. This was a reach, but if Arnett becomes a pro bowler and a good player, then it doesn't matter because he performed the way a first round player is expected to. However, I don't think he will do that good this season, and I expect him to get picked on quite a bit by opposing quarterbacks. It will then be up to him to figure out how to succeed in the NFL and how to prove the naysayers wrong. Moving on to Miami now, and with the 18th pick, it was tackle Austin Jackson out of USC. Austin's goal will be to keep fellow rookie Tua Tagovailoa healthy, which he was not during his final year at Alabama to say the least. The injury concerns were real for him, and Jackson needs to keep him up. Obviously, if Tua does get hurt, it doesn't necessarily fall all on Austin Jackson, let's get that clear, but the ultimate goal for the Dolphin offensive line is to keep their guy up and out of harm's way. The Dolphins' future looks very bright right now, and if they drafted a future franchise quarterback and a future franchise offensive tackle with their first two picks, then they did a very good job drafting. For 2020, Austin's goal will be to start all 16 games and to really establish a good foundation to build on in the coming years. A successful rookie year would be to start every game and to not be abysmally bad and show promise. He is very young and won't turn 21 until a few days before the team's first preseason game. He has a lot of room to grow and has a very high ceiling as an offensive tackle. Now we go on to a pick every Cowboys fan is excited about, and understandably so, because it's wide receiver C.D. Lamb. C.D., at least in his rookie year, probably won't put up gaudy numbers or anything too out of the ordinary, and that's due in large part to the other weapons in the offense, like Amari Cooper, Ezekiel Elliott, and Michael Gallup. It honestly may be a few years until C.D. puts up a 1,000-yard year because of all of these players, but in year one, a successful season for Lamb would be somewhere around the 60-65 to 65 catch mark and around the 8 to 850 yard mark. If he proves me wrong and goes for over a thousand, then so be it. That's awesome and good for him. I just don't think he is an instant impact Pro Bowl receiver in year one especially because of the team he's on. And that's not to say he doesn't have the talent, it's saying because of how many other weapons are on the team with him to be 100% clear. Heading northeast to Atlanta for the next pick, and it was cornerback AJ Terrell. Like Damon Arnett at 19, I thought this pick was a little early, but regardless the pick was made and Falcons fans have to live with it. AJ is in a good position to succeed though, and here's why. Every day in practice, he will get to 
go up against a good wide receiver in Calvin Ridley and a first ballot Hall of Famer in Julio Jones. Iron certainly sharpens iron and AJ will become a beneficiary of going against those two in training camp and in practice every day throughout the season. Not only that, but he will get to play six times per year against players like Michael Thomas, Emmanuel Sanders, Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, and DJ Moore. I think the success of Terrell, like Arnett, will be evident early whether he has the ability to play at the next level or not. The NFC South has the best wide receivers in football, and he will be tested early and often to say the least. A successful rookie season for Terrell would be to hold his own and to not get continuously toasted against their premier NFC South receivers. Going to the Mile High City for our next player to discuss, and it's Broncos wide receiver Jerry Judy. I absolutely love what the Broncos are doing and how they are getting weapons around Drew Locke with players like Cortland Sutton, Noah Fant, now Jerry Judy, Philip Lindsay, Melvin Gordon, and KJ Hamler. With that being said, there's simply a lot of mouths to feed, and with only one ball to go around, I don't see Jerry Judy, at least as a rookie, putting up any big numbers. He could absolutely go for a 55 to 65 catch season with anywhere from 7 to 900 yards, but to expect him to have a huge impact as a rookie, such as an 85 catch 1300 yard year to me at least isn't happening. There are so many weapons in that offense and while I do think Judy will be a great receiver in the NFL, I don't think he will put up insane numbers at least early on. He's in a very similar situation that CeeDee Lamb is in in terms of how he'll perform in his rookie season. Heading to the Bay Area for the next pick and it was defensive lineman Jafon Kinlaw. Simply put, Kinlaw is a beast and will thrive on this defensive line. He will play alongside players like Nick Bosa and Arik Armstead, and while he won't be as good as DeForest Buckner was in 2019, at least not in his rookie year, he can eventually get to that point in the next couple of years. He probably won't be a big sack numbers guy, and that's okay because forcing a quarterback to move around or to be uncomfortable in the pocket in some cases is better than a sack. In terms of setting players up to succeed, I don't know if there's a player more fitting in the entire 2020 draft class than Javon Kinlaw. As I said, he probably won't be too good statistically, but quarterbacks will absolutely know he and his defensive line teammates are there on nearly every play. Now we head to Tampa for the 13th pick, that being offensive tackle Tristan Wirfs. The Bucks had a good offseason, and Wirfs was a good selection, as they probably didn't think he would fall as far as he did. Now Tristan will have a lot of pressure on him as a rookie, and he has to block for the GOAT in Tom Brady. The Bucks did need an offensive tackle, and whether or not Tristan is that guy early on, we will soon find out. But for Wirfs to have a successful rookie season, he needs to limit the hits Brady gets, as Brady at 43 years old needs to be untouched in the pocket as much as possible, and because of this Wirfs may have a bigger role in his rookie year than he ever imagined. His success will be looked at from a casual fan standpoint if Brady has time in the pocket and how many yards per carry their running backs average. Tristan should succeed in Tampa, and I'm sure Sure Tom will help him out in any way that he can. Now we go to one of the most exciting players in the draft, and it's Henry Ruggs. Ruggs is going to a team in the Raiders where he should be the number one wide receiver from day one. He should receive a lot of targets and should be a good fantasy option for fantasy football players as well. The Raiders have seen firsthand what speed can do in playing Tyreek Hill twice a year, and they got their version of that in Ruggs. They will be doing what they can to get him the ball, whether that's on bubble screens, reverses, deep balls, whatever the case may be, Ruggs will be getting the football. And because of how fast he is, his speed must be accounted for at all times, and he may open opportunities up for players like Josh Jacobs because the play a defense rug speed isn't accounted for is the play Derek Carr hits him for a deep touchdown over the top. Ruggs' impact will go beyond the stat sheet due to this, but for 2020, if there is a 1,000-yard rookie wide receiver, I think it is Henry Ruggs. Ultimately, I'm predicting his stat line to be something around 70 catches for 1,075 yards and 7 touchdowns. And for the final part of today's video, we go to the Big Apple for Jets tackle Makai Becton. Makai, three years from now, could be the best tackle in football or a huge draft bust. I really hope he becomes a wrecking ball, as Sam Darnold in the first two years of his career hasn't had much help. However, the Jets gave him some help in the draft with the acquisitions of Becton and wide receiver Denzel Mims. Projecting Becton's rookie season is extremely difficult because it could go in so many different directions. However, for this video, I do think Makai does well and makes steady improvements throughout the year. And ultimately, I think general manager Joe Douglas will fire Adam Gase as I don't think that's his guy to coach his team. The next coach will try and utilize Becton and his strengths as he is an absolute mountain of a man and will need the right coach to unleash his full potential. 
Becton will be pivotal for not only Darnold's development, but for how Le'Veon Bell does in year number two in New York. I think he can help him become similar to the player he was in Pittsburgh, and Bell would be very, very appreciative of that. And that's all I have for today's video. I hope you enjoyed, and if you did, please leave a like. It helps a ton. And if you're still watching, please subscribe to the channel, and I appreciate the time out of your guys' day, and I'll see you next time. Have a great day. Skull Bikes.